Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now guys, this is vlog number seven of rearranging the cacti and succulents in the polytunnel out there. And as you can see, it's a bit of a wet day today, but it's very warm and mild. And then a fantastic few days of glorious sunshine here, here in Northern Ireland, so we've been very lucky. And um, I'm gonna be rearranging the plant pots and the sauce is all in the polytunnel today. So I'm not gonna be doing any repotting or anything like that while it's wet. They forecast some great, great weather this week coming up. So I'm gonna be um, repotting a lot of the hanging baskets and a lot of the other type of plants I've got in there as well. So stay tuned for some videos coming of that. But what I'm gonna be doing today, before I start rearranging the plant pots and sauces in the polytunnel, I just have a few more plants to put in there. And um, all I have here is um, just a few seedlings that um, cactus and succulent seeds that I've been growing from seed that um, I'm going to put into the polytunnel. And um, these ones I've been growing with the baggy method. And if you're not familiar on how to grow cactus or succulents from seed, links up above to a video I made a couple of years ago on the method I use and how to grow them from seed. I, I like to use the baggy method, but it, it all depends. Um, some people prefer to sow them without. Hansi sows them without, don't you, my love? Yes. <laughs> and he has great success. So it's really down to personal choice. Um, <laughs> and um, what I normally do is I leave them in the bags for about three months and then I take them out. I sort of un undo them slowly so they don't go totally from being 100% humidity to the dry air. And these have been open for a few days. And normally I would keep them because they're only tiny, as you can see. I would sometimes keep them in the baggies for a lot longer, um, as long as possible, really, till they come out. But in this case, as you can see here, they've had a, a bit of moss growing on top of the soil. So I've unzipped them and uh, I've been scraping off the moss very gently with just a little sort of um, wooden type of blunt-ish but sharp enough to, to scrape around uh, around the moss. Um, just a piece of wood really, like a bit like a long toothpick, but you can use a toothpick if it's not too sharp. And I just removing the, the moss around them. So I've decided to take them out of the bags. Moss is harmless growing on seedlings um, as such. It doesn't really be a problem, but it can be a little bit invasive and unsightly and it can take over the seedlings. So that's why I've decided to take them out of the baggies. But they've been in for, for three months, except for these ones here. But again, no problem. And the trick is to unzip the bags slowly so they don't go from high humidity to complete um, the drier air. And um, as I say, explain more in the video on how I grow cactus from seed. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. So this morning, I'm just, or this afternoon, I should say, it's just gone 12. I'm gonna be um, just scraping the, these ones I've already done here. Just finishing off scraping the little moss on these baggies here. And um, putting these then into the polytunnel on the little shelves. And I'll show you when I do that. And then I've just got, I think all I have to do then is just the saucers and the pots. And that's pretty much it. So that should be the polytunnel completed. So hopefully it won't be such a long vlog today. <laughs> and um, what I do here, I'll just show you what I do. Should you grow um, cacti or succulents from seed and you have this problem, it's very common. And I'm always being asked about moss on top of soil and algae. It is pretty harmless as such. I just, as I say, gently scrape it, scrape it away. I prefer to remove it because it's, it is unsightly and it can uh, overtake the seedlings um, as long as it's not um, dangerous uh, type of fungus as i say some fungus that grows on the soil is also harmless and can even can even be beneficial so no need to really panic as such but uh in this case as i say it's i prefer to remove it and you could put i mean i've got a bit of sand here or horticultural sand what i was going to do is actually sprinkle that in between because that also helps to keep moss and alg algae if you can call it algae from growing on top of the soil but in this case i'm going to leave it i think because I was going to do that, but I'm not going to bother now. I'm just going to scrape it off and leave it as it is. Um, there, a lot of these seedlings now are bigger than tiny, so they should be able. They should be okay. And um, as I say, the um, I'm going to put them in the polytunnel, but away from the really direct light. I'm just going to put them onto the table, a little bit away from intense intense sunshine because they're still quite young. And I'm going to carry on removing removing the moss gently around. And the reason why I use a little bit of a blunt a blunt wooden edge here rather than too sharp is because if you're going around neatly trying to scrape scrape the algae or the moss off off there, you don't want to stab the seedlings with infection and 
and rot will, will occur. So you just want to make sure it's blunt enough, just enough, just to gently lift away that, that uh, moss. And as I say, I'm going to finish off doing this one and the other three in these bags. And I'm going to show you um, where I decide to put these in the polytunnel. Now, guys, me and Hansi are just stopping off for a bit of lunch. And um, this is our traditional Sunday lunch. Uh, we don't have Sunday roast like a lot of people would. Me and Hansi are vegan. Yeah. And we love not only um, being vegan for the animals, but also it's healthier for you as well. And what we would have here um, for a typical Sunday lunch is a lovely salad with um, wonderful fresh sprouts and uh, sweet corn, lettuce, tomatoes. Hansi does the most incredible, garlic, incredible salad onions. with garlic, yeah, and uh, red onions and everything. Hansi is just the best at making this. It is delicious, guys. Now, there you go, guys. That's our delicious salad. Hansi's topped it off with some lovely tomatoes. So that is going to be absolutely scrummy, yummy tummy. <laughs> Now, here I'm back in the polytunnel again to just finish off um, the seedlings here. That's them all sort of removed from all of the um, sort of the algae and the moss. And we have a little string of pearls plant that's going to be put in away. That's from upstairs and in the, in the plant room. And that's really all that has to be put away. And as I say, we've got a little space underneath there. Some more space under their little rail. And um, we also have a bit more space here and I'm probably going to try and fit as much as the seedlings on these trays here first and see how we go. These sticks are going to be used for um, staking up the mother of thousands when we repot them because they grow very sort of lanky so um, these I'm just going to be putting down here for now and um, then I'm going to start putting these onto the shelf. Now that's the little string of pearls put on here on the on the little shelf I've got here and um, this string of pearls was actually um, propagated from a load of cuttings from my big mother plant that I had that um, I had to trim down because it was getting very long and then um, when I repropagated re a lot of the cuttings it came down in mealy bug again so I had to retreat it all again and take more cuttings but it's making a bit of, re of a good recovery again and um, the little uh, leaves modified leaves that are actually um, like little pearls, or I like to think like little peas, <laughs> are starting to fatten up. What's amazing about this plant is that it has a little tiny sort of transparent stripe going through each tiny little pearl or, or pea, if you like to call it, and that little stripe lets in light so um, to form photosynthesis. That actually acts like a little bit of a window, a little bit like lithops, how they work with the, the way they allow the light through their modified little leaves. Very interesting little plant. Wonderful. <laughs> Now guys, that's all the seedlings put away here on the tray. I've managed to get them all onto this shelf here. And this gets um, light, but sort of filtered sunshine, not intense. So it's ideal for young seedlings because best to keep them away from very strong sunshine. And um, as I say, we've got the sort of the green coating, so it never gets intense sunshine anyway here. But at this corner, it does a little bit more sheltered than it is during the day. So um, these I'm just going to be keeping lightly misted with a bit, a bit of just a little bit of fresh uh, rainwater every every other day, just to keep the top surface of the soil lightly moist. And um, obviously, it'd be a long time before they need to be potted up again. <laughs> these are some of the older seedlings here that I've had for a couple of years now. It's about three years. I think 2015, I sowed a lot. To the, a lot of them but these are all sort of from this year in February which have grown a lot when you think look at them all these lovely Mammillaria ones and uh, Astrophytums, Trichocereus and also um, um, Carni the Giganti commonly known as a big Sawaru cactus some more Mammillaria there some Cloister cacti some Trichocereus pacanoi San Pedro cactus and a few other varieties as well there so that's that done I'll show you where I put the have some little gasteria seedlings that I grew from um, seed these here little gasteria these are where I have all the gasterias and the aloes and hawartias and the likes 
and this one here is this little pot is all the little the little gasteria seedlings they are really really cute and i've got two different types in here one is one that i sowed in february these two here is what i sowed in february and these ones i've just potted up into this pot they're a little bit old and these are what i sowed last year but um rather than have lots of little pots i've decided to put them all together so um they get a bit of shade there as well and um protected by all the big all the other big plants here now the biggest job i've got here guys and this is my challenge for today and then the polytunnel is completely done from head to toe and that is just sorting out all of these pots and saucers under the table it's a bit of a mess and i usually have it all in order where i have different size pots from the smallest to the largest so when it comes to repotting i just go straight to the pot um, i need much easier than trying to find the, the ideal size but because i've been repotting and everything's been all over the place with the with um, moving all the plants these have sort of all got messed about but i'm going to be putting them all in size order now and um all the saucers all in size order too so it's going to be much easier so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get everything out and then i'm going to show you how I, how I get along with all the different stages <laughs> that's all the pots all out from under the table as you can see there's loads so i'm going to be putting them all into size order putting the largest on the back of the right hand side and then <coughs> here we have all the different uh, size saucers and um, it's going to take me quite a while to sort all this out putting them in order but um, i'm going to start uh, now i've got them all out and show you what they look like when i've put them all away now that's all of the uh, plant pots put roughly away into some type of size order um, just so it's much easier when we go to pot on to go next to the next size up. I sort of got sort of all the clay and ceramic ones in one area and square pots in one and roughly around the same size anyway which is great. I'm just making a start now on the saucers and um, I've got all the clay saucers right at the back and now I'm going to be starting on all the plastic saucers here putting them all all into order now guys that's it all done under the table i have everything in order every plant pot sorted out and all the trays the plant trays all in the the right size order it's gonna be so much easier now when we repot and i'm pleased to say that the polytunnel is now completed from top to bottom i'm very very happy to say nice and sorted all in order really really pleased as you can see there's loads of space now on the floor um, because all the tall ones are out in the yard all the tall cacti except for these these here um, but all the rest are out in the yard the tall ones and this is mainly all the smaller ones all in the polytunnel so it's wonderful we still have loads of space underneath as well for storage which is absolutely brilliant as i say these two on the floor are going to be being potted up into hanging baskets and then going to be hung up here and a lot of the epiphyllums and the rip sally dot and the schlumbergias are going to be um, repotted into the hanging baskets over the coming coming days and weeks so stay tuned for lots of repotting videos as i say they're just sitting in these hanging baskets now in pots and um it's just awkward because they're sort of when i go to water they sort of the water comes out because they're not um, in the hanging baskets as such they're just sitting in pots inside the hanging basket so i'm going to be putting these grouping all the epiphyllums together and the slumbergias and that making sure they're all labeled so know which one is the right flowering type and look at that lovely um seed pod soon to be harvested there on the um orange brazil slumbergia very exciting i have the big dragon fruits here hanging up too which is great and as i say lots and lots of repotting going to be doing the next the next few days and next few weeks but other than that it's all pretty much all sorted and um, I won't take you out into the yard because it's pouring down me rain but a perfect day to be sorting things out in here so that's all done and now um, me and Honzi are going to go and have a lovely baked potato with garlic butter and baked beans to finish off our lovely day